No matter if points are gained or points are lost, there will be much to discuss. For analysis regarding tonight's Winnipeg Jets game, here are Dave Manouk, Ezra Ginsberg, and your host, Drew Mandel. The Illegal Curve post-game show starts now. Good evening, Winnipeg. Good evening, Manitoba. And for all of those joining us live somewhere on the interweb, good evening and welcome to the Illegal Curve post-game show. Or should we just call this the Jets will never lose ever again show, Ezzy, because the Jets are streaking. I was thinking no Mandel hour, Dave, but we can go with that too. That would work as well. This is, of course, the Illegal Curve Post Game Show. That voice you're hearing is mine, Dave Manouk. I'm in the host chair tonight. That is my main man to my left or right, depending on your perspective, Ezra Ginsberg. And we're here to talk about the Jets' fifth win in a row. They sweep Del Boca Vista, phase three. They beat the Lightning. They beat the Panthers. Who don't they beat, Ezzy? They barely lose a game in November. Well, Baby Yoda is already calling a Jets win over Nashville. So, well, I mean, that's that's some good foreshadowing. But the fact of the matter is, the Jets are eleven two and two through their last fifteen games. And of course, we'll uh, have to mention the emotional boost they got with the return of Rick Bonus, which of course is the the bigger focus. As I wrote about on illegalcurve.com, Ezzy. Is what a surprise Judy, this morning. That was just great news to hear. Well, the good news is that Judy Bonus obviously is well enough that Rick feels confident to go on the road. So the good, good Oh, I think I'm back on somehow. Oh well. Hello, everybody. There's Dave Manuk. I am can you hear me now? Here's the question. Can you hear me? <laughs> I well, obviously they can hear me, as he because somewhat fancy heard me drop an F-bomb. So uh Hell of a show. Hell of a show we're doing this Friday night. All right, everyone. As you can tell, I was a little stressed. Making things happen. We're back. I apologize for uh, the F-bomb, but, you know, I was wanting to get back on this show and get back to, to business. So thank you for Ezzy for, uh, for running the ship, and let's get back into it. But anyways, what I was saying when I went, when I went mute was simply that uh, the Jets got, obviously, Rick Bonus back, and, and they're happy, and there's a lot of good feelings with this team right now. Five wins in a row. And uh, again, like I said, they're, they're, there's a lot of joy in Joyland. And the one thing I was about to say, boys, as, is the fact that Gabe Velarde is shed his non-contact. So, and that's something obviously we'll talk about more tomorrow. But uh, Rick Bonus wasn't prepared yesterday to say that there wasn't going to be a Gabe Velarde return on Sunday. He said, we'll see, which is typical uh, of Rick Bonus. So no surprise there. Okay, well, I appreciate everybody in the chat for giving me and uh, and uh, and bearing with me. So uh, thank you for everyone. Thank you for Ezzy for, for trying to steer the ship while I was having technical problems. But we're back, and we're not going to tell Mandel about this, Ez. We're just going to cut those five minutes of dead air out. Maybe my F-bomb will leave in, but let's... Uh, Let's try and get into it because you know we have a, we do have a show tomorrow, so uh, we better get started with our from our friends at Betway, the Betway Game Recap. The Betway Game Recap. The game recap, Ezzy. Well, that begins with I, what I thought was, and I mean, I want to get your impressions because I've been talking and people are hearing me. Uh, was what, what? What did you think of the start? Because to me, that was a pretty slow start between both teams i thought they'd be a little bit more amped and it seemed like it was very cautious i think there was like one shot for the jets and none for the panthers for the first few minutes so uh, to me it seemed like it was very slow beginning and then it picked up a little bit as the game went on yeah i would agree with that it was a little bit low event until maybe the last you know four or five minutes of the first period but uh you know i think that you know the jets definitely you know picked up some steam as that period went on and yeah, I mean, you know, it was a little bit of a chess match in in the first period, uh, to be expected a little bit. These teams haven't played in a while, and you know, the Jets, uh, you know, I think, you know, this was another game where the majority of it was played at at five on five. But there's no doubt that this was a little bit slow to start. Yeah, and 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 you know, the the biggest question mark coming into the game for the Jets was the status of Brendan Dillon. He didn't skate this morning. Uh, he was a game time decision with the lower body. I thought I happened to be reviewing that. Tampa game uh, for reasons unexplained, and um, I thought he got taken out a little bit in the in the third se- third period or second period of that game. So he has got taken out of the leg. So I'm thinking that maybe that was what was bothering him. But all Rick Bonus said was that it was a lower body injury. He obviously ended up playing. Logan Stanley did not, and uh, the man who 
I think deserves a lot of credit, Ezzy, and I, I jokingly said, get him signed to an extension ASAP, is Nino Niederreiter. And he's, of course, the guy who gets things started for the Jets. And he's just a bull in front. And that's how, you know, you need to get some goals. And that's exactly what he did to open up the scoring here uh, for the Jets in the first period. Yeah, absolutely. Nita Ryder just gets really good positioning in front of uh, Brandon Montour, who's the defenseman that's covering him. Um, but, you know, love love Dylan Sandberg puts a good shot on net. And, and you know, look, like Sergei Bobrovsky doesn't handle the initial shot by Sandberg well. I think Sandberg's got an underrated uh, good shot. So, I mean, that there's a little bit of blame to go around with, with Bobrovsky. But you love how Nita Ryder just outmuscles Montour, who's a big boy one of the Panthers' best defensemen. Um, and, you know, this was right off of a face-off. So, obviously, you know, Lowry wins the face-off. And, you know, good on him uh, for doing the the dirty work along the boards to get the puck back to, uh, pardon me, it's Appleton. Uh, Lowry wins the face-off, goes to Appleton. So he gets the puck back to uh, Dylan Sandberg, who puts it on net. But, yeah, this is, you know, just vintage Nino Niederreiter, right? He's a big boy, 6'2", 6'3", 210 or 215 pounds. Uh, so that's just... Uh, quintessential third line hardworking goal and as you mentioned there weren't a lot of high danger chances in the first period yeah but it seems like the jets are you know taking you know advantage of their high danger scoring chances right and you know just getting goals you know the good old-fashioned way just putting the puck on the net and banging in a rebound yeah and and that third line just continues to get it done and the second line as well like i mean all the lines seem to be getting their chances like you said there weren't a, a ton at least in that first period but, you know, they're generating, and that's what you want to see. And, and the fourth line, too, deserves a lot of credit. Obviously, there they're, they weren't a ton of special teams in, this, you know, game, in the game, but they, when they get called on, those guys have been able to, you know, um, be pretty solid. So from, from, a, from that perspective, it's, it's another thing that you've got. The four lines are rolling, and, and that's a good thing for the Jets. And, you know, it's a one nothing period. And, and overall, I thought, again, it, the first period, it, was, it wasn't, a, wasn't the best period of hockey, but it's, it ended a lot better than it began. I thought it was a lot better than, you know, than it had been. And Connor Hellebuck is again, Connor Hellebuck. And we saw that again. I don't know what his overall uh, goal saved above expected was tonight as, but I think it was around three, maybe like he was still very good in that. And we've seen kind of that return to form with Connor Hellebuck. And that's obviously, you know, very important for this Jets club. I mean, they were good five on five again uh, tonight, but Although I haven't looked at the numbers yet, because of course I was scrambling to fix all my mistakes. But well, it was pretty even, right? Like, I, yeah. I mean, the, the, we talked about it. Each team got two power plays, right? So yeah. The majority of this game was was played at even strength, and the, and the expected goals uh, was was very close, and the, and that matches the eye test, right? I mm -hmm. mean, this was this was a three nothing game, so the score looks a little bit, I think, more flattering towards the Jets. And I'm not taking anything away from the Jets. Um, I just thought like it was a, a really strong positional game from mm -hmm. the Jets. Like they just played really well structurally, right? And like I, I think you go back, I think it was the second period, right, Dave? Alexander Barkov, there was the two on one. I forget who yes. the other Panther was. And Barkov was on his backhand, but he decided to pass it back instead mm -hmm. of having a shot on, on Hellebuck. Yeah. And I think it was just like the Panthers, it just seemed like they were overreaching and they had to work extra hard to get those really good scoring chances. Like, yeah, they had shots. Remember Listerinen, um, I mean, he whiffed on the the breakaway. I think mm -hmm. that was a, a Panthers power play, if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe that was a shorthanded. No, it was shorthanded. Yeah, it was shorthanded because Listerinen wouldn't be out there for the power play. Right. He gave the puck away. It might have been Morrissey, uh, who I thought was excellent tonight. But Yeah, yeah sublime, I mean, sublime to quote Dan, sublime, Dan Robertson. Absolutely, great band and great word, right? But <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Jets, look, I mean, they're rolling right now. It's pretty absurd if you think about it, 11-2-2, two and two, you know, five wins in a row. And they're beating good teams, right? Like Florida, Tampa Bay, New Jersey, you know, these are good teams. Obviously, you know, Arizona, not so much. But right. Arizona, you know, they're a pesky team. They're definitely and better they're, than they were last year. And Ezzy, they were only two points back of the Jets at the time those two clubs met. So it wasn't as if you were talking about a club that was, you know, in the basement. I mean, Arizona's been picking up wins. And you're right. Like, this is this is not a mirage. I mean, like, you know, Paul Maurice, what was he used to say? Your, your record is who your record is, it says you are. And look, at the end of the day, the Jets have a good record. You know, are the Jets a top five team in the NHL? Probably not. But are they a top 10 team? I think so. And and right now they're playing like a top five team based on the fact that, again, you're getting production throughout the course of this lineup. That third line continues to produce. Because remember, we've always talked about it. They're good. They're heavy to play against, or they're hard to play against, and heavy to play against. 
but the fact of the matter is, and they were able to hold water, but you're getting production. And to me, that was the biggest question mark. We always said this, you can't be a line that gets as many minutes as they do and not produce goals. Obviously you want to be able to hold them, but you need to be, you know, on the plus side of the ledger, as they say, as, and, and the jets third line or however you want to construct those lines or, or reference those lines is getting it done right now. And so they do, you know, in that first goal. And again, you know, just quickly, it, it, to me, Nino Nino Ryder just does so many smart things throughout the course of a hockey game in the offensive zone and in the defensive zone and in the neutral zone. So you got to give that credit guy credit because whenever you see 62, you're, you're just impressed with his tenacity and his work. And to me, that's that's what he just screams out. And that's why he's such a good fit in this on this Jets club. Right. And Morgan Barron did an admirable job last year, but you, you, I mean, it's just been an upgrade on that third line. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and obviously Niederreiter was more of a top six guy when he came over from the predators yeah. uh, before the trade deadline. But I agree. I mean, that line right now, I mean, if you want to talk about, you know, usage, they're actually the Jets second line. Right. Right. But obviously third line when it comes to talent. So mm-hmm. we're going to call them the, the, the third line, but you're absolutely right. Considering that Niederreiter could easily play on the second or first line, I mean, he really does it all. He he is an excellent defensive forward. You always see him hustling, getting his stick, you know, in the way of passes and and shots and everything like that. And you know, he's not uh, a quote unquote tough guy, but he's a right. big guy. We talked about it, and he's an annoying player to play against, right? He gets in on the forecheck, he goes to the net, he causes his defenseman, you know, he's a distraction in a really good way in front of the net, right? And you saw that on the first goal, right? And it's kind of funny, right, that. He's got six goals, but they're all on the road. Uh, and he's played well at home, but he obviously, you know, is more comfortable on the road. Just kind of a weird stat. He's obviously going to eventually score a goal at Canada Life Center. I just thought that was interesting that, you know, all six are on the road. Well, as he obviously hates his goal song and wants to change it. Yeah, it's funny. I don't even remember what his goal song is. Uh, what is his goal song? Well, I mean, there's a little site called theleocurve.com that says if I type in Winnipeg Jets goal songs... It will tell us all of the Jets' goal songs. Well, and uh, this oh. is a good comment from Baby Yoda. We're putting up a lot of Baby Yoda comments tonight, but, you know, they really can. Oh, Disco Inferno, the Ezzy. There you go. Yeah, Disco Inferno is a good one. But you know what I'm it talking about? Like, this this third line really is yeah. the best that we've really ever seen the Adam Lowry with any group of, of players. And that is a testament to Mason Appleton's improved play this year. He's obviously... Yeah you know, on pace for his career high and goals and assists, right? Mm-hmm. And Nito Niederreiter, who just compliments, they just, this line, they all three players complement each other. And they're really tough to play against. That's the thing. Yes, they've been scoring, but when they're not scoring, they're out there and most of the time the puck is in the other team's end and they're causing the other team fits. So yeah, right now, I think a lot of teams around the NHL are having trouble dealing with the Lowry line. Yeah, and and look, there were the... Second period goal scum, Maria, is pretty easy to go over. There were no goals in the second period. There was uh, not a lot of penalties. There was not a lot of power plays. There wasn't a lot of anything in that second period. You know, I mean, again, the Jets' uh, penalty kill was was solid. We know they didn't they didn't give up anything. I thought the refs seemed not. They seemed almost uninterested in calling penalties in this game, and I'm okay with that. But they did let a lot of stuff go. Like there was that little play where Matthew Kachuk uh, was on his knees. Looking, he's looking to the right. I shouldn't do that when I need to be speaking into the microphone. But Kachuk is in looking to the right. Shifley's skating from the left, and Kachuk kind of goes bang with his stick. And you know, of course, oh, I didn't see you there, Mark. And and the one thing you do like to see, because I thought it was interesting. I think it was at the end of the second period, was the fact that is the refs when they're not calling things. Like for example, when uh, there was a play um, when Nate Schmidt gets taken out, and Dylan Samberg comes to his defense. And basically, like, takes Kachuk, and I don't remember who the other Panther was, and he puts him into the boards. And, you know, it starts a huge scrum. But, like, you go on to see those guys sticking up for each other and standing up for each other. And especially if, you know, we saw, obviously, with Brendan Dillon taking, not, not liking that at the end of the game. But you want to see the guys either standing up for themselves or standing up for the teammates and not being pushed around. Because, you know, look, they, the people talk about the Jets being a big team. They're not that big a team. There's some big guys on this team. But they're not a huge team. But they played you know, big enough. And the, and the Panthers are a bit of a chippy team. They're not, again, they're not the biggest team, but they play a little bit of a more physical chippy t- uh, style of game. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would agree with that. And obviously led by Matthew Kachuk and you're right. Mm-hmm. I mean, you like to see that teammates sticking for, up for each other. And this isn't the first time that we've seen that. Obviously we've yeah. seen that, you know, the whole season, 
but you're right. I mean, I, I, I think it really ultimately comes back to that, you know, the Jets are a hard team to play against with four good lines now. And, you know, we talked about it earlier. Dylan Sandberg had two assists tonight. Like Dylan Sandberg and Nate Schmidt are definitely playing their best hockey. And it came out earlier this week that they're actually one of the best lines. I saw pardon that. me, best pairs when yep. it comes to expected goals against, right? Yeah. And obviously they haven't played the whole season together. Right. Uh, but they've played over a hundred minutes together, right? That was the uh, requirement mm-hmm. for that, uh, those rankings, right? That I think came out from either Money Puck or, or J Fresh Hockey, right? Um, well, but two. yeah, just incredible, really, you know, what this team is doing, right? Because I think you'd you'd agree, Shifley Connor Iafalo, like they, they were they were they were solid tonight. They were good, mm-hmm. but you know, they didn't put you know seven or eight points on the board like they have in previous games. Yeah. And same thing with Ehlers, Perfetti, and Nemestikov. Obviously, the second line gets one of the goals tonight. Right. Um, but it was just it's there was just balance. And I agree. I mean, you know, the, the difference in this game was not, you know, the the Gustafson line. But the Gustafson line was really good, right? And, you know, you would think, you know, there'd be a little bit of a drop-off with both Velarde and Kupari out of the lineup. But the Jets have won every single game since Kupari went down, right? So yeah. uh, everything's going well. And obviously, you know, we've talked about Connor Hellebuck already tonight. Um, yeah. But when Connor Hellebuck is playing that way, they yeah. can literally beat anybody. No, there's no question about it. And I agree with you. I thought the Panthers were trying to be too cute with a lot of their chances. So... You know, there were there were times where you just get the puck on net and hope for a rebound because, you know, Connor Buck's making, like you said, it's like Kramer. He kept making all the stops, and he's making all the stops as. So it's, it's Evan hard. Rodriguez had the chance. I wanted to, to highlight that one, Dave. We mentioned the yeah. second period. Uh, obviously, uh, no goals, right? But, yeah. uh, the, you know, there was a really good chance. Evan Rodriguez had the puck behind the Jets' net. He brought it out. There was nobody in front. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had a lot of time, you know, basically, you know, and, and Evan Rodriguez is a good player. I think he's got six or seven goals uh, already mm-hmm. this year. Uh, and Hellebuck just made a glove save, make absolute look easy. Like he he was, he was down a little bit, but he just made the save look easy. And I yeah. think, you know, we mentioned the Alex Barkov chance on the two on one uh, mm-hmm. and he decided to pass. He should have shot because th- that's the thing too. We've watched Connor Hellebuck enough to know that, you know, based on his work in the first period, this was a game where he wasn't going to be letting in more than a goal or two. Yeah. Right? So when Barkov has a great a chance like that, he's got to shoot easy for me to say. I mean, Alex Barkov <laughs> is a top five center in the league, arguably definitely top 10, one of the best defensive forwards, you know, in the last decade in the NHL, but uh, just thought, you know, that was kind of the type of night it was for the Panthers. The jets played that well defensively that they were frustrating the Panthers. And back to what you were saying, Dave, about, you know, the Brendan Dillon fighter, the Jets sticking up for each other, like Shifley mm-hmm. getting into it. Yeah. I just think that the, the Jets were getting under the Panthers' skin, right? Mm-hmm. When you're playing that well. And that's the thing. The Jets are playing with so much confidence right now. Yeah. Um, you know, it's really incredible to see. Like, you know, do like we said before, are, are we going to, you know, order the rings and, and plan the parade route down <laughs> Portage and Maine? Mm, we'll wait till April to do that. But I yeah. mean, right now... Look, give the Jets credit. I mean, the the wins speak for themselves. They're uh, are they first in the Central now? I think they're tied with Dallas in points, right? They might be. I, uh, they may or maybe be I forgot if Dallas won tonight. But if Dallas did win, then they were two points back. So, yeah. I mean, this is this is uh, you know, it's a good question. As we'll we'll see if we can find out an answer. Well, I'm check sure the someone... stand, check the standings right now, Dave. Yeah, I'm checking. I'm checking as we speak. of trying to multitask. Yeah, they're tied. Jet, Jets and Stars both have 26 points. Yeah. So the Winnipeg Jets are first in the Central. Yeah, just like Hide everybody, just like everybody predicted, by the end of no- November, past that Thanksgiving deadline. Although Rick Bonus was asked about it, he says he he was asked about it following morning skate. He said doesn't give in to that. So uh, Dallas lost four; they were up four two and lost seven four. Wow, that's a heck of a game. Thank you, Matthew Thompson, for that update. That's the old Sports Center update from Matthew Thompson. But look, uh, it's just a, it's a it's a team that's feeling good, and you can see the vibe. They're vibing right now. And and so they go into the second intermission. They're up two nothing. Sorry, one nothing on the on the strength of that Nino Nita Ryder goal. But again, it was a, I thought it was an exciting second period, even if there were no goals scored, because again, you get that you get the the blood rising. And it's interesting, you know, similar to what we talked about on the last postgame show, as he with the fact that Tampa Bay and and Winnipeg always seem to play tight games and exciting games. You know, I thought the Panthers and Jets game was it was a tight game and it was another exciting game. And and maybe it's those first few years of the South Least Division carrying over, but ultimately, uh, you know, again, it was an exciting forty minutes, 
And even though it was a low scoring one, nothing game, there was still lots happening, lots of chances, lots of good saves at both ends. I mean, you got to give, uh, Sergei, Sergei Bobrovsky, uh, credit on that Alex Iafalo stop. Yep. I mean, that was just a phenomenal stop by, uh, by Bob. So, uh, yeah. there were a couple on of the nice pass from Connor. You're right. That was a really good save. I thought that was a for sure goal. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm already like trying to, you know, tweet it out for from the IC account as there's no question about it. So no, Dave, I, we've I, got over 370 people watching right now. Yeah. Thank you everybody for joining us. Smash that like button. What are you doing? Hit that's that a like good, button. That's a Don't very good shy. point. Don't be scared. This is the Illegal Curve post game show. It's a little bit of a, a late starting Illegal Curve post game. Actually, it started on time, and then we had a technical issue. But now we're rolling. We're like the Jets. We're in our five game win streak right now, as a you and I. No Mendel. So this is a this is this is a we're cruising. Drew's at a concert tonight. He was telling me about it. It was a, a band that he saw at Folk Fest. I forget the name of the band. Drew, Wait, that's Drew's, why Drew's not Drew's doing the show. A little bit of a you know, uh, he's on the scene a little bit. He goes Drew's to a lot a... of concerts. He was at what was he at Fifty Cent and Buster Rhymes? Did he go to Wu Tang too? He, he may have gone to Wu Tang. Which is crazy because, as you know, Dave, since high school, I've been into Wu Tang. Drew couldn't even name three songs, but there, here we are, forty-one and forty-two years old, <laughs> and Drew is a hipster now, going to see Fifty Cent and Wu Tang. So, well, there you go. Now you know. Now the folks in the chat know what was up with uh, Mendel for his night. But as you and I were locked in on this Jets game, we're watching it uh, minute by minute to keep you guys uh, in the loop. Well, you guys really are in the loop, anyways. You don't really need us to be. This is we're superfluous, as he. The chat is alive. And we love it. It's a Friday night. John this Drew is... is a Swifty, for the record. But who isn't a Swifty? Exactly. I mean, Taylor I mean... Swift is is phenomenal. I enjoy all of her work. She's great. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, I'm not arguing. If someone could lend me fourteen hundred dollars, I'll go see one of her <laughs> concerts. <laughs> yeah, you, you're gonna have to if, forgo your mortgage payments this uh, month, as he. But uh, you can go. You can fly to Vancouver. Or tr- she's she's passed over Winnipeg. I guess she, the thriving m- metropolis cool. that is Winnipeg. She chose not to come see it. I don't know. I don't know if you've ever seen one of her concerts, Dave. But like, uh, that's a funny comment from uh, Frosty, Frosty Winnipeg. Um, but uh, that's also a funny comment from David. Wu Tang is for the Drews. For those who don't know, the <laughs> the, the saying goes, Wu Tang is for the children. So that's a pretty funny one as well. Uh, but actually, Taylor Swift, Dave, when she's on stage during her concerts, okay, she actually just has one of those um, like cash counting machines going. At all. Like she has like <laughs> ten of those cash counting machines going, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. <sighs> like just counting all that money. Uh, she I does bring figure, a lot of money. You know, to the just economy. as an aside, I thought it was um, really impressive that she remastered and re-recorded all of her albums mm-hmm. so that she really truly owned it. She was in control yeah. as opposed to yeah. the, the record label. So I did think that was interesting uh you know that taylor swift went to all of that trouble to remaster albums but uh i think that's enough talk about taylor swift dave and let's get into arguably the nicest goal of the year scored by a winnipeg jet well as i I, hold on before you do that the only thing i was gonna say if you're gonna really say if you're gonna give her a shout out you got to give her a shout out for for first of all boosting every economy she goes to and then also supporting the uh, truck drivers who uh drove all of her i think she gave them each a bonus of like 100 or 200 grand uh, for the for the tour, so pretty nice stuff from that. But let's get back to hockey because this is the Illegal Curve Hockey Show, not the Illegal Curve Taylor Swift Show, unless uh, Mandela is running it. We'll we'll get back. Yeah, as as Jeff if Jeff is saying, this is not Sw- this is not Swifty's lunch, as he. It's the Illegal Curve post game show talking about the Jets and Panthers game. Appreciate so many of you guys joining us and girls, I should say, guys and girls joining us here on this show. It, it is after. a hockey show, Doug. We just have to. You know, every once in a while, we have to yeah. talk, talk about Hold Taylor on. Swift. Doug, you've Doug, Doug has listened to us long enough to know that if there is not one sidebar side tracking on a on one of our shows, then then we're 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 not doing it right. But don't worry, we will stick with hockey. But we like to get sidetracked every once let's, in let's a while. Get that Seagram's bumper ready, Dave, because oh. I've got a little sh- little shot here of Fireball ready to go. Okay, well, it, when once we've hit that third period, as we're going to do. There she is. There she is. Hold on. The Seager shot of the game. Like Nikolai Ehlers. L'chaim, been... Dave. L'chaim. There you go. Oh, he's nice. Very put in a nice classy glass. Ooh. Nicely done. Oh, that's delicious. 
Well, as you deserve the reward of the good Seagram's Fireball, yum, and, yum, and yum. from a courtesy of our friends, it's Fireball, of course, enjoy that responsibly, Mr. Ginsburg. But the Jets go up 2 nothing on just a phenomenal play of the the the, the usage of Nikolai Ehlers' speed. Great they will pass. talk about this goal one day in history classes, Dave. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but I mean, again, he goes inside, outside, turns the defenseman around and goes up and over uh, Bobrovsky and puts it in to the back of the net. Uh, that was at the 11:15 mark of the third period. And it was just a phenomenal effort by Nikola Ehlers. I mean, that's, that's what you need him to be doing, which is using his, his legs and his speed. And we've seen it more and more. And, and again, like nobody's surprised by the fact that Nikolai Ehlers is now getting into that form as, Oh, everybody wants to see a chug. There we go. So the fact of the matter is, Everybody want is not shouldn't be surprised because he missed training camp and and we you you can malign training camp all you want but if you don't get a chance to be participating in it then October is essentially your training camp and November is now Nikolai Ehlers looking like Nikolai Ehlers and that line that second line whatever you want to call it they're really finding each other and and again it's going to be an interesting dilemma and we'll get to that probably on tomorrow's show as what the Jets are going to do with Gabe Velarde and whether they'll return him or they'll wait one more day. But that's just such a phenomenal goal by Nikola Ehlers to make it 2 nothing for the Jets. Yeah, and just before we get into that goal, because obviously we're going to spend some time here on this goal because we only have three goals to talk about. <laughs> but this is obviously, you know, uh, I think a contender for goal of the year. I think you would agree, Dave, that the Mason Appleton goal uh, scored earlier in the season, I forget who that was against, where Josh Morrissey had to pass Adam Lowry a stick from the bench. Yeah. I think, I think you know, that's in contention, um, for, I think, for... Now, now, I don't, now I don't have to feel bad because I think we lost Desi. Boy, it's just it, it's been quite a night on the illegal curve post game show, folks. This is 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 Ez frozen or is it me frozen? Which one of us is frozen right now? I need the chat to give me the heads up because right now it looks like Ezzy's frozen, but that mean could mean that I'm frozen and I'm just living in a parallel universe. Okay, good. Running man saying Ezzy's frozen. Boy, boy, everyone, this has been quite the night. But this is what happens when you rely on the internet or you rely on technology. We didn't really necessarily have this problem back in the day, back in the, the 1290 days. Every once in a blue moon, that would happen to us. But we appreciate you sticking with us while we, uh, hey, Ezzy had to run solo for a bit. Now Dave M is running solo for a bit. Somehow Ezzy's back, but it's a new Ezra. But he's got the old Ezra. How many Ezras are in the chat? Uh, for the record, we're... Oh, damn it. You got rid of it. How was that even possible? I don't what know. What happened that was, there? I, that was amazing. Was, my internet browser... Like, did I just... Like, what happened? That was weird. My you, internet browser just completely shut down, and then I got, like, a virus protection notification. Well, you were taught... So what happened was, I was listening to you talk, and then your, your face appeared to be frozen, and I was about to message you in the chat saying, as your face is frozen, but I can still hear you perfectly, and then all of a sudden... You just went silent, and then I started explaining to the folks in the chat that we're having one hell of a night here. Well, it's, it's been that kind of night, so there's only really one thing to do. Take another Seagram shot of the game. That's what I like to see. There we go. Finishes it off. But Okay, well, let's get into it. I mean, look, that goal by Nikola Ehlers, I agree with you. It, it is a goal of the year candidate. At least, you know, we're approaching the quarter mark, so it's yeah. a little bit early to be saying it's going to be the goal of the year. But it's just a phenomenal effort by 27, and it was outlined by you in the, one of the comments that he fakes the shot, then goes around, and then puts it up and over uh, Bobrovsky to make it 2-0. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, this goal, I mean, is is really all uh, – I mean, it's it's all speed, but it's all stick handling to me, right? And, yeah, it's an inside, uh, inside-outside move. Uh, but, I mean, just the speed of Nikolai Ehlers – and I, I like, like, and, and, you know, p- people are talking about, you know, the, the defenseman was, uh, was it Belinskis? Who's the defenseman? I believe 26, right. Was the defenseman. So he's, he's obviously not a, you know, a top defenseman for the Florida Panthers, Aaron Ekblad and, and Brandon Montour, are the two best defensemen, uh, for the Panthers. But, um, you know, I, I, I don't know, like, I, I think Nikolai Ehlers to me knew that. And he probably knew that he probably couldn't do that around, um, you know, an Aaron Ekblad or a, yeah. a Brandon Montour. Um, but just incredible that Nikolai Ehlers can do that at at top speed, right? And that's what stood out to me. Like, Nick Ehlers has done some pretty special stuff. But the fact that he accelerated at that level uh, and then just put that inside-outside move backhand to forehand 
and just also just a beautiful shot. Like everything about that was just an uh, you know a great individual effort um, by Nick, Nick Nick Ehlers. And I agree with you, Dave. Like the start was slow, mm-hmm. um, but he's definitely picked it up. That line Ehlers, Perfetti, and Nemestnikov have been incredible. But yeah, I, I think regardless of who that defenseman was, you still have to give. He's still an NHL defenseman, Belinskis. I don't know a lot about him. Right. Uh, I believe this is his rookie year or his second year. He hasn't been in the league a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, just a, an amazing individual effort. And to do that at top speed and then finish it off with a beautiful shot on Sergei Bobrovsky, who played very well tonight. Yeah. So that, that has to be for me, if it's not the goal of the year so far for the Jets, uh, yeah. it's right up there with the Mason Appleton goal. Yeah, no, I, I that's a good point, Ezzy. And, and again, that's what you want to see if you're, you know, folks were worried about Nikolai Ehlers, right? And and now you're seeing him heat up and, and you're seeing that line continue to add production. And, and that to me is the most important thing. Like, you know, everybody gets excited when you see the Shifley, Iafalo, um, Connor line put up, you know, 11 points in the game. Each guy gets three, four points, whatever it is. But the more important thing from any, for, I would think that anybody would, would tell you is that you want to have depth. And so from from a Jets perspective, looking at this team, getting the scoring from the third line, getting the scoring from the first line and getting the scoring from the, the uh, second line. And again, you're not getting any scoring really from the fourth line, but they're still having a lot of success. They're doing what they need to do, which is, you know, carrying the puck into the offensive zone, weighing the other teams, you know, defensemen down, you know, cycling the puck and just trying to control whatever they, whatever time they have on the ice, you know, and keep it in the other end of the ice, uh, you know, from the, obviously from their end. But, Again, like I said, if you can have three lines churning and scoring, like the Jets seem to be doing right now, as he, I mean, it's it's going to produce. And right now, like we said, five wins in a row, 11, two and two, only two losses in all of November. They'll try and keep that going when they play the Nashville Predators on Sunday. And, you know, as I'm not going to ask you to break down the final goal, of course, because we don't generally break down empty net goals. Well, it's funny. I mean, we were joking. Uh, Nito Niederreiter should have had an empty net goal. Uh, but he missed it somehow. <laughs> well, and, uh, but and, yeah, I mean, look, look, Adam Lowry, you know, continues to be hot. The third line remains hot. And I agree with what you're saying, Dave. Like we've talked about it quite a bit on the Saturday show. Like the Jets forward depth is probably the best it's been since that 2017, 18 season. Yeah. Um, but also you throw in now Connor Hellebuck. You notice that he's right up there now in terms mm-hmm. of goal save above expected with Thatcher Demko and yeah. uh, Jeremy Swayman and, and other goaltenders, right? And, you know, everyone is freaking out after five or six games. But if anybody <laughs> knows anything about Connor Hellebuck, it's that he's harder on himself than anybody. And if he yeah. has one bad start or two bad starts, usually that's followed by three, four, five really good starts, excellent starts, right? So, mm-hmm. yeah, right now, I mean, look, I mean, Dallas right now, I think is, I, I would say, is a little bit better than the Jets. I think Vegas, uh, you know, is is the top team in the West, not just in the standings right now, but I still think that they're the team to beat in the West. But I think you could safely say the Jets are the third best team in the West, right? And Colorado's in that conversation. Sure, throw in Vancouver as well. You can't discredit what they've done. Um, but, you know, going into this, this is not an easy road trip, right? Dave? No. Like Florida, Tampa Bay, Nashville. I don't know if anybody saw Nashville one seven two today over St. Louis, right? Mm-hmm. So obviously, you know, I don't think anybody thinks Nashville is a standard. The Ryan O'Reilly defender. return game, is he? Right. So I mean, that's not going to be an easy game, and we'll break that down on on tomorrow's show. But you know, you know, Jets fans, you got to enjoy this right now. And I think you know, based on the you know three hundred and thirty plus people watching right now, I think everybody's enjoying this Jets winning streak. By the way, did we have more people on the show when we? weren't actually on the show than they do now. I mean, is that possible? I do like this comment by Jeff, all right? The one we just had up there, Ezzy, because it's it's interesting, right? This is the longest we've seen these lines somewhat stick together. You know, Gabe Velarde's will, if he doesn't play, I think he's missed 16 games now. Uh, so that was his 16th game missed. And it'll be interesting to see. Obviously, Rasmus Kupari comes out uh, as well. And so you've got Gustafson and Axel Janssen Fielbe. Yeah, and it'll part- be it'll be AJF, Dave. I don't I don't see Gustafson coming to the lineup. That's my opinion. Oh, so I see I think, what you're saying. Yeah. I think Axel Janssen Fialbi becomes the thirteenth forward once Gabe Velarde comes back. Yeah, and obviously Kupari is going to be out for uh, you know another five to six weeks here, mm-hmm. right? So and that's and and you know obviously you don't ever want a player to be injured, right? But David Gustafson's playing well, 
Like mm-hmm. he's not, you know, scoring every single night. Right. He had a scoring chance tonight. Him and Morgan Barron combined to have a decent scoring chance. Yep. Um, and they've just played well, right? Getting kind of around that seven to ten minutes, closer to ten minutes. Yeah. Um, so it was sub ten though, for sure. Yeah, but I mean, that's that's what you expect in a in a closer game. I mean, if if the Jets are up, you know, three or four goals, then the fourth line might get into that kind of 12 to 14 minute range, but that's what you want out of a fourth line. You want a solid seven to 10 minutes. And obviously David Gustafson and Axel Janssen Fialbi can, can kill penalties. But uh, what I would say about Gabe Velarde is, you know, whether he comes back on, on Sunday versus Nashville or Tuesday at home against Dallas, does it even really matter where he goes with the way the jets are playing? Like, it's not like, you know, Gabe Velarde, if he ends up playing on the second line, um, you know, with Cole Perfetti and Nick Ehlers, it's not like, you know, <laughs> that's a line that you now have to worry about. Right. Um, whether he's on the first line or the second line, uh, you know, he's going to continue to to play well, or I should say he's going to resume. And, and obviously, you know, you're expecting him to start a little bit slower. I mm-hmm. mean, if he doesn't, you know, get a goal every single game in his first three or four games back, nobody's going right. to be complaining. But that's what I would say right now. I, I think that's a good problem to have when you have four good lines going. Um, you know, I, I personally, Dave, I told you, I, I like Velarde up with Shifley and Connor, but Vel- yeah. but but Iafalo is playing really good there. So I think probably what makes the most sense is, you know, you put him on that second line and you move Perfetti back to the middle. Velarde plays on the right. Ehlers plays on the left. Nemesnikov gets bumped down to the fourth line. And then you arguably have the best fourth line in hockey with Morgan Barron, David Gustafson, and Vlad Nemesnikov. Well, and, and you know, again, it's it's an idea of do you want to do as you know a few changes as possible, right? Because if you move, I have foul, put Velarde back where I have was, then you move, um, I have foul down, you move the mask up, you could basically change every line with the exception of the third line. So, you know, that'll be the the question for the Jets coaching staff, Rick Bonus and his crew. So we'll see what what they choose to do. And and look, we'll Sparky just end obviously up... wasn't that impressed by that Ehlers goal. He thinks the <laughs> Jets should trade him. I think obviously he's being Sparky's a... joking. I think Sparky's being a contrarian. The only thing you folks, if you want to be contrarians, is two things. Number one, smash that like button while you're listening to this being the Illegal Curve post game show. I'm your host, Dave Manuk. He's my main man, Ezra Ginsburg. Or not or and please smash. Make sure you're subscribed. Now most of you are, which is always a good thing. But if you can. Make sure you're subscribed. Oh, also, I'll add a third thing, Ezzy. Make sure you add a comment. So just quickly to finish off, Jets have a chance. You said you touched on it. Nino Niederreiter could have put it into the empty net. Doesn't. And then they pull the goalie with five minutes to go. Bold and play by uh, Paul Maurice. Down two goals. And, of course, then Vlad Nemestikov gets that probably your second least favorite penalty. Your delay game is probably the, your least favorite penalty. Face-off violations, Ezzy. I don't know why. But I feel like that would be your second least favorite penalty. So Vlad Nemesnikov, Vlad Nemesnikov gets hit with the face-off violation. So the Panthers have a chance six on four, but the captain Adam Lowry after going nine games without a goal, he's got goals in back to back. He puts the dagger into the Panthers three, nothing. And the jets are going streak in five straight games with a win for the Winnipeg jets. So uh, things are good in jets land. It is my thanks Perry. It is my show. I appreciate that. Perry, uh, the winner of the Tough Duck Tuke. Who will be the winner of the next Tough Duck Tuke, Ezzy? That's a good I've question. Got one queued up. There have been some great comments tonight, but I think this, I have my winner. I don't, Dylan's saying, what time is the Saturday show? The t- same Saturday show is the same time it's always been, Dylan. 9 o'clock sharp. Well, we say sharp, but it's usually 9.01 because Ezzy and I are usually... 9 o'clock central. Yes, 9 o'clock CST. But I'm that not is sure when if it, Dylan is in the is in Manitoba or the central time zone, but it is nine o'clock central. And as Dave mentioned, it's been nine o'clock central for what, 13 years now? The only time we ever didn't do a show at nine o'clock back in the day, back in the TSN days, was that if the Jets were playing, and I remember in particular, they were playing in Philadelphia at noon and we had to do a show at like six in the morning because our, our old show as on TSN 1290 was a three hour show. So we used to have to go on because we'd go on before Hustler and Lawless and uh, we'd be on before the pregame show, I guess. But like, it was crazy. We'd be doing like, like, we'd be on at like six to nine. And then I, I remember that's when I put my foot down. I said, that's it. I'm done. I'm not doing a six. As he picked me up at like, be like five 30 in the morning. Uh, so I was like, no, 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 no more of those types of shows. And then we killed it's down. A nice breaking hours. news from Bailey, by the way, Schmidt and Hellebuck get the jackets tonight. There we Very go. Well deserved. Yeah. Dave and I were talking about that watching the game here in the third period. Yeah. Uh, we already talked about how good of a pair, you know, Schmidt and Sandberg have been lately, that third pair. 
Um, mm-hmm. But good on Nate Schmidt, right? Like he was a healthy scratch earlier this season. Uh, you know, we talked about Brendan Dillon was a game time decision tonight. He obviously did play. So I guess Logan Stanley probably would have gone in. If yeah, Brendan he would. Dillon he would, he wasn't took, ready to go. Yeah, he took Logan Stanley skated in his place uh, this morning at, um, at at morning skate as per our friend Ken Weeb of the Winnipeg Free Press. So that still sounds weird to say. <laughs> okay, well let's uh, let's head to commercial break. Let's pay some bills, as and then once we come back from uh, commercial break, we will anoint a tough duck winner. We'll maybe set up tomorrow's show, uh, as in I want you know can't go too late. I know folks want us to go long. But you'll have to get it all out in Kenny and Rennie because, uh, you know, we got another show coming up in less than 12 hours. So uh, let's hear from our sponsors right now. <laughs> Your coworkers love you because you always make them laugh. You're the life of the party with stories that have them rolling on the floor. Or maybe you're just the quiet one in the corner with the one-liners that just slay. Do you have what it takes to become Winnipeg's funniest person with a day job? Try your luck. Hit the stage at Rumors Comedy Club, and you could be walking away with $1,000 cash. Winnipeg's funniest person with a day job. Presented by Rumors. For all the details, head to RumorsComedyClub.com. So you're a pizza person. You married a wing person. But somehow your kids are salad people. You can't pick your fam, but you can pick your BP meal deal. Starting from $18.99 for takeout or delivery at bostonpizza.com. The game can change just like that. Accidents happen when you aren't protected. So now what? Getting to your injury quickly can make all the difference. Help prevent them from being game changers with Linden Market Dental Center. Bonding, crowns, bridges, and dental implants. State-of-the-art treatments are available to help you get back in the game. To learn more, visit LindenMarketDentalCenter.com. Creating smiles for life. Whoa, Ezzy, everything okay? You look stressed. Of course I'm stressed. We're moving, the house is upside down, the kids failed miserably at packing the fine china, and my life is in chaos. Chaos! Yes, that does sound like a problem. What am I going to do? Ezzy, relax. Rolly's transfer moving and storage is the answer. With 60 years of experience in moving Manitobans and a track record of exemplary customer service, one call to Rolly's and your stress is gone. No job is too big or too small. Just visit rollies.com and they will take it from there. Thanks, Dave. And thank you, Rolly's transfer moving and storage online at rollies.com. Boston Pizza harnessed analytics to test if the game is better at home or at Boston Pizza. The results are irrefutable. Catch the game at Boston Pizza, powered by Fanalytics. For three generations and over 80 years, Tough Duck has been making apparel that works and plays as hard as the people who wear it. From jackets to work boots and everything in between, Tough Duck's clothing can handle the harshest environments, even the illegal curve hockey show. Work to live, live to play. Visit toughduck.com. Welcome back to the Illegal Curve post game show. We've got audio, we've got video. Things are running smoothly, thankfully. I am your host, temporary host, Dave Manuk. He is Ezra Ginsberg. I saw that comment by Larry. Larry went to an Olive Garden for the folks who are listening to the podcast. Haven't been to an Olive Garden in a while. We actually ordered it. I remember the office ordered it for lunch, which was fantastic. But, uh, you know, Olive Garden, a little soup, salad, bread. Six, Larry's pushing hard here for the tough duck, hardest inning comment. Usually we keep it to hockey, but that's a pretty good Olive Garden review here, Dave. That is a good one. That is a good one. But unfortunately, I don't think that's the one you picked. So we're going to we're gonna hide Larry's comment, even though I enjoyed Larry's comment. And we are going to ask Ezra, if you are you ready with the tough duck, hardest hitting comment? And if you I give am. me the thumbs up, then I'm going to, I mean, well, as long as you get, get rid of all those comments, as this is the problem when you give Ginsburg access to that. <laughs> well, hey, we got a good Olive Garden thread going. They're not a sponsor of the show. Maybe no. they will be one day. But we'll 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 take a look. Okay, well, let's go to our friends at Tough Duck to ha- for the hardest hitting comment of the game. The Tough Duck hardest hitting comment. 
Okay, here we go. Lots of good comments tonight. We appreciate everybody joining us, but we're going to go with uh, I see post game show regular, and we're going to give it to Dark Moon. I like this comment. Got it up there. The chemistry of this team is showing, and they are playing remarkable, remarkably good offensively and good defensively. Not to forget about Hellebuck and Bersois. Amazing. Keep up the win streak. I mean, really, like, you know, Dark Moon, I think, nailed it there. Mm -hmm. I mean, all four lines are rolling. The yep. D pairs look look right, as uh, Paul Maurice always used to say. Right? We talked about it. Like Nate Schmidt earlier in the season struggling a little bit, but now Sandberg and Schmidt have formed that nice Minnesota pair there. Uh, and then obviously, you know, the top two D pairs are set in stone with Morrissey, Demello, and then Dylan and Pionk. But you know, the Gabe Velarde kind of conundrum, as we were kind of joking last weekend, to me isn't really a conundrum anymore. You know, with the Jets having won five in a row and 11, two and two uh, in their last 15. I mean, I think regardless if you put Velarde on the wing on the first line, on the wing or the, on the second line, up the middle on the second line, I think what probably makes more sense, uh, you know, is if you put Perfetti between Velarde and Ehlers on that second line and then that bumps Nemesnikov. We have a good debate going in the chat. Some people think Ayafalo has earned the right to stay on the first line. Mm -hmm. Other people think Velarde should go back on the right wing of that first line, and then Ayafalo gets bumped down uh, potentially um, to to the fourth line, I guess. I mean, I guess you, you could easily put, you know, Ayafalo with Ehlers and uh, Perfetti. Uh, it, it's kind of hard. It's, it's You know, now now I think about it, it's probably not the easiest decision for Rick <laughs> Bonus or Scott O'Neill, but regardless, Dark Moon, Send me an email, Ezra at IllegalCurve.com or slide into my DMs on X slash Twitter, I-C-S-E-G. Send me your mailing address and we'll hook you up just like Perry William Cousin, who we're going to send a uh, toque out to him in the great province of Alberta. And Jordan Hare, we are going to send that toque. Tough Duck is going to send that toque to his dad because his dad is on, on, on in Ontario because Jordan, of course, is in the... Uh, beautiful country of australia so that's a little bit more expensive when it comes to shipping but jordan <laughs> will eventually get that too so dark moon congratulations you are tonight's tough duck hardest hitting comment winner well congrats and, and thank you to everybody who participates in the contest uh, supplying great comments throughout the course of this broadcast and each and every broadcast when we go. go live dark moon still watching well, we should hope so. Hopefully everybody. Uh, Jordan Harris It was a full moon tonight. I don't know uh, how Has many he... people noticed that, but it was a full moon. I have moon. cousins actually in, in Perth, Australia. The the um, I have uh... cousins at Perth Dry Cleaners. <laughs> really? No. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I have I have not close cousins, not close cousins. I believe the mom was a Manuk, so uh, they're out in Perth. Nice. Western Australia. That so Manuk maybe, dynasty is all maybe across may, the world. Maybe Jordan is, is a relative of mine in some capacity. Who knows? Um, all right. Well, it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a good show so far. We've uh we've we've gotten through it. We've had no more we technical... Had those technical difficulties. I don't know what it is. One of these days, like we'll figure everything out, but uh yeah, I don't know. My computer has been an issue. I got I have the new computer now. But, you know, we've got these fancy Shure microphones uh, and, you know, we just, we, we fought through it, Dave. The rest of the show's been fine. It was that first five or six minutes where we were just kind of finding our legs. We, it, we absolutely did. And, you know, as I'd be remiss if I didn't do this. Put on your antlers. It's time for the Manuk Moose Minute on the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. <laughs> it's really just a fake out because... The moose were it's a great were comment from Jeff, by the way. <laughs> that is a great comment. I see technical difficulties greater than or less than EA Arlington Bridge has. Uh, I would say equal. No, it's greater than or less than. But remember, it's always the alligator eating. No, I know that that was greater than. I thought you were asking me if I thought that that was right. If it was oh, greater than. Oh, I see what yes, you're saying. That is greater than. Yes. Okay. I didn't. I didn't know if you. The Arlington like, Bridge, as you know, Dave, though, has been. A little shaky for over a decade now. <laughs> like we're talking about probably twenty years that that Arlington Bridge has been shaky. Ugh. So I'm not sure that you know spackle and uh, you know mortar <laughs> is going to take care of that. I think that's going to be well, maybe that sounds gonna like it's going to be a bomb that's going to be taking care of it because they're demolishing <laughs> I say, it. Is. I think that's a, a demolition job at this point. 
Uh, well, I, I, it, I, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. Like I said, it's the best route from, uh, from garden city to the downtown. So it's unfortunate for those of us, uh, who use it quite frequently as I did perfectly, perfectly timed lights. It was great from Inkster all the way to the bridge. It was smooth sailing. And then there weren't a lot of lights between like Logan and Portage. So it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's the death knell of a great route. It's unfortunate, much like the moose play tonight. So I'm going to quickly uh, zip through this one because moose didn't do much of anything other than give up a goal on the first shot of the game. Where have you heard that before? Quite frequent this season. And in grand Rapids, Desi, it was a teddy bear toss. And unlike the moose who in the teddy bear toss, they do it in the first intermission grand Rapids, who I think has the biggest one in the AHL. They, I think they end up giving like 10,000 toys away, but they do it at the first goal. So as soon as they scored, the toys come raining down on the ice. And if you didn't see it, I clipped it and it's on IC Dave. So check that out. But the Moose basically got pumped. They lost 5 nothing. Their PK last year, which was in the last couple of years, has been a top uh, PK in the AHL. They're down to 27th. And they gave up two goals on the power play. End up losing. They were five, down 5 nothing. End up losing 5-1. Jeff Malott broke the shutout of... Michael Hutchinson, former Jets Moose goalie. So uh, Michael Hutchinson. The, the right catching Michael Hutchinson. Correct. So Michael Hutchinson, he uh, gets the shutout bid broken with nine seconds to go. Jeff Malott with a shorthanded goal for the Moose. Uh, they'll end their road trip. They went two and three on the road trip. Uh, Nikita Chibrikov, who had six or no, five goals in four games. he's uh, His streak is done. And uh, the Moose are going to try and go even it up in the rematch on Sunday. So uh, the Moose are middling right now. The goaltending, not great. Uh, of course, Thomas uh, Milich is down with uh, Norfolk. He's picked up his f- second career shutout, but that's the Moose minute. So not a lot to talk about, but we will get into that as uh, when they play again. So we'll have to wait till the next well, and, one. And but- I agree with what Phil has said, like, right? Like Jansen Harkins, they lose him to waivers earlier in the season, right? Yeah. And then you've got Axel Janssen, Fialbi, and Dominic Toninato up with the Jets right now. Yeah. Right? So that's two of their best veteran players. And Janssen mm-hmm. Fialbi, he's 26, but he's a veteran player. Yeah. And Toninato, obviously. Uh, Jiminy, Jimmy Olaney, that injury's hurt. Yeah, You talked about sure. Declan Chisholm played tonight. Like, so that's the thing, right? Like, the AHL, of course, is a developmental league, as you know, Dave. Yep. But, I mean, the Jet, the Moose, pardon me, are they're a little bit shorthanded right now, right? And... Yeah, guys like Nikita Chibrikov and and Brad Lambert, they're putting the puck in the net. Their offensive numbers are good. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, when you're facing some veteran teams like Grand Rapids and and the Toronto Marlies, I believe they're still more uh, of veteran teams, right? Yeah. I I mean, I don't know their their rosters inside and out. Um, So I think the Moose will be fine. They're just going through a bit of a rough patch right now. Well, the Moose will be back after they finish out this road trip. They'll be back home. And guess what? We'll have lots of tickets to give away. But that's a story for another show, Ezra. This show... Is going to come to an end. We are going to put us, we're going to stick a fork in this one because, again, as I said, we'll be back at it in what is it like 11 hours? And Dave, yep. I'm still got to do a game recap, still got to do the morning papers. So, with no further ado, because my boy Frosty Winnipeg put it up on the chat, we want to thank our sponsors because without them and without you, we would not have a show. Well, we would, but there would be nobody watching and nobody supporting. Rumors Restaurant and Comedy Club, Linden Market Dental, Farmery, the home of the Illegal Curve Beer. Hopefully, we'll be doing a Saturday show at Farmery's retail location at 2 Donald Street sooner rather than later. Zapia Group Realty, Betway, Tough Duck, Boston Pizza. Remember, December 7th, Dark Moon was asking about having a beer with the IC guys. Jets Avalanche, 8 o'clock p.m., Thursday, December 7th. Be there. At Boston Pizza on Taylor. IC will be up on the marquee. So come join uh, Ezzy, Drew, and I on December 7th, 8 o'clock, as Ezzy just said. Pizza, get those cactus cut chips and uh, sit down, have a beer, and watch the game. There you go. Seagram's, Rollies Transfer, and the Rink Guys. Although, actually, Frosty, not the Rink Guys. So, you know, <laughs> Frosty's got to fix it. I told Frosty if he puts one up that's not there anymore, Frosty's always got to check the YouTube uh, link to make sure what is and what isn't. Yeah, the Rink Frosty. Guys were just a, a short term sponsor for a month, but that's yeah. okay. We won't hold that against Frosty. We're very thankful for the rink guys for their support. Yep. And even though they're only a, a short-term sponsor, not sponsoring anymore, we recommend that you contact the rink guys, go to the rink uh, because they're still installing outdoor rinks. Obviously this uh, milder weather, not a lot of snow has actually been beneficial for them. So still check out the rink guys for sure. 
Okay, well, that is a uh, heck of a good show. The Jets are on, of course, a heck of a good run, Ezra. Uh, five wins in a row, 11, 2, and 2. Oh, look at that. Frosty's already amended it and fixed it, as. But 11, 2, and 2 for the Jets right now. They are in first, tied for first, but in first right now on NHL.com in the standing. So there's a lot of joy in Joyland. We want to thank you for spending your Friday night with us. We're looking to forward to already spending our Saturday morning with us here on what will be the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. I am Dave Manuk. He is Ezra Ginsberg. We will be back with you. Enjoy the rest of your night. Smash that like button. Make sure you're subscribing. Drop a comment on this channel or on the podcast. I appreciate it. You know, it's all about the algorithm. Anyways, have a great night. We will talk to you very soon. In fact, we'll see you very soon on the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. This has been the Illegal Curve Postgame Show.